themselves are rather indefinite. But his composition is magnificent. I'd like to have it for my collection. Monsieur Dubois, that bust of Dubarry, how did Lady Boschman acquire it? It's from the collection of Count Jacquard, an original Pajou, in exceptionally fine bisque. Uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, notice the perfection of this little piece, especially the delicacy of detail and the classic line of the figures. Amazing. Of course, one must never forget what the Grecian line owes to the Egyptian, which in turn gave birth to the emperor. Oh, what charm, what symmetry, what harmony. But, monsieur, you embarrass me. Oh, forgive me, madame, but perhaps I have an excuse. I am Professor Hotwani of the Royal Academy in Budapest, and uh, I was admiring that beautiful pendant. Uh, 16th century, is it? Yes and no. I don't understand the no. It's a long story and a very old one. Oh, uh, please tell me, madame. I'm very curious. <laughs> no, no. Oh, oh, do tell please, me, please, please, madame. Well, it, one of my ancestors, Anastasia Vronsky, was greatly beloved by Tsar Ivan. Champagne, madame? Yes, please. Oh, champagne for everybody. Please go ahead. And then, and then? To show his admiration, he ordered a pendant made, which he hoped would prove to be the envy of the court. So I wasn't mistaken. It is 16th century. A tiny bit. This jewel is a copy. What? This is an imitation? Uh -huh. May I please look at it closer? Yes, of course. Oh, please go on. Tell us what happened. It became the most prized possession of the Vronsky women. Madame. Merci. Unfortunately, my grandfather gave it to a ballerina with whom he was terribly infatuated. He had this copy made so that my grandmother wouldn't miss the original. It is a remarkable reproduction. <laughs> it had to be. Thank you. I'm so sorry, madame. It's nothing at all. I'm Please horribly excuse me sorry. Moment. Madame, it is so clumsy of me. Give me a whiskey straight. Brown and white, please. Yes, monsieur. Purchase? Oh, no, it belongs to Countess Vronsky. Oh, Countess Vronsky. Do you know the Countess? I met her here and there, a very charming person. Give me another one, will you? She must be very rich. She was. Her fortune is now in the memory. But she still has some beautiful pieces of jewelry. A 61 is Man on Hunter. This is a very interesting... Have you purchased this royal jewel? <laughs> royal? It might be imperial if it wasn't a fake. <laughs> May I see it for a moment? Yes, please. Well, my friend, this pendant is worth a fortune. Monsieur Dubois, granted that you are a great expert, but for once you are wrong. This jewel is false. I will gladly pay 200,000 francs for this pendant. Perhaps that will convince you. Now, as I was saying, this man on Hunter is one of the most interesting pictures we've had. Countess. Forgive me for having made you wait. Would you think me imaginative if I told you when I look at these stones, my mind conjures up a picture of old Russia and Tsar Ivan? How lovely. I'm an odd sort of person, you know. I hate to give this back to you. You, you wouldn't sell it, would you? It never occurred to me. Oh, what a pity. But if someone would offer you, oh, I don't know how much, say, 5,000 francs. Why should you want it? I told you it's worth nothing. Of course. You may not know it, but I have my romantic, poetic side. I know I don't look it. But I'm really two people, the artist and the businessman. And it's the artist in me who offers you 10,000 francs. Help me with this, will you please? Countess, I want this little pendant as a souvenir, and that's why I offer you 15,000 francs. Careful, you scratched me. 25,000 francs. Thank you, monsieur. But this jewel is all that is left to me of my family, my memories, and my country. Believe me, monsieur, one does not sell all that for a few francs. <laughs> and besides, I think you're joking. But I'm not. <laughs> 50,000 francs. I am an obstinate man, Countess, often too obstinate for my own good. It's difficult to refuse such an offer. Then you'll take it? No. No, really, I couldn't. Countess. You see, it wouldn't be right to sell your worthless imitation for 50,000 francs. But you've told me it's a fake. You won't be cheating anyone. Very well. You may have it. Thank you, Countess. But uh, only if you put it in writing that I warned you the jewel is worthless. <laughs> I'll be glad to. <laughs> that at least my conscience will be clear. You Russians are strange people. <laughs> Very strange. <laughs> <laughs> she wants a letter. <laughs> 
Yesterday, you offered me 200,000 francs for this. I remember the conversation, monsieur. Mind you, I have been offered more, but because I want to dispose of it quickly, I've decided to let you have it. That's kind of you, monsieur. Oh, not at all, not at all. And now, will you get out of here? Shall I call the police? But, but I do not understand. This is just a cheap imitation of the pendant you showed me yesterday. And your trick is even cheaper. Out! Oh, no. You... You mean it's worthless? Oh, no. It's worth all of 50 francs. Oh. 50 francs. For you. How very nice of you to come and see me off. Oh, not at all, not at all. About your pen, Countess. I've decided I shouldn't deprive you of an heirloom which means so much to you. Please don't worry about me, Monsieur. As long as you are happy, I have no regret. But I have. I've decided I have no right to take it away from you. Let's call the deal off. I wouldn't think of it. You wanted it so badly. But it's worthless. Of course it is. I warned you. You even put it in writing. Oh, my but dear. it's not fair. I've paid 50,000 francs for it. <laughs> That was the point in you, don't you remember? But goodbye. Good, goodbye. Come in. Countess Volsky? Yes. Excuse my intrusion. Colonel Lepo. I believe you know Professor Hartmann? Slightly. Countess, I wonder whether I could interest you in a precious family heirloom. It has magical qualities. You can sell it and sell it over and over and still have it. <laughs> <laughs> Tanya, you were magnificent. Wasn't she, Andre? Every inch the Countess Vronsky. <laughs> Exquisite. Really. I don't think my impersonation of Professor Hotwani was half bad. Weren't you afraid of stepping somewhat out of character when you lifted the ambassador's wallet? Okay. Only you didn't. Yes, yes I did. did. I tried to restrain myself, but I can't. I guess I'm just a pathological case. Polo, I warn you for the last time, I won't have our enterprises endangered by any more of your small-time thieveries. Andre, leave him alone. He won't do it again. He better not. Thank you, Tanya. You are very considerate. But, but you really don't belong in this sort of business. Well, why not? Well, because it's dishonest. <laughs> That's very funny, coming from you, Polo. I said so. <laughs> I am different, Tanya. I am a weak character. So is my whole family. Polo, dear duckling. Waddle away while I ponder your fate, huh? <laughs> huh? All right, I'll go. But I'm hurt. <laughs> Why do you treat the poor fellow like that? He tries so hard. That's just that he tries too hard. He gets on my nerves. And how can I keep him in line when you pet him and openly take his part? <laughs> Andre, he cannot help it. He's a kleptomaniac. Why, this morning he took a powder puff out of my pocket. What for? I don't know. <laughs> well, Tanya? Well, Andre? You know, Tanya, our association up to today has been a rather pleasant one, hasn't it? Can't we keep it that way? Can't we make it a little more pleasant? I'm afraid not. Tanya, you got me all wrong, but more important than all that, it isn't very inspiring to wake up and see Polo's moon face the first thing every morning, is it? Particularly for me, with my sense of beauty. I know all about your sense of beauty, Andre. And I beg to remind you, my dear Tanya, that had it not been for my sense of beauty, you would now be what? A third-rate ballet dancer instead of a first girl? Third-rate? I said third-rate. And please, don't try to overawe me with that countess stuff, will you? Have a heart. After all, it was I who invented it. Indeed you did. You invented me. From the tops of my hats to the tips of my slippers, even to the shade of my hair, my lipstick and my nail polish. Not to speak about my carriage and behavior. Well, you didn't do so badly following my directions, did you? When I first met you, you were practically impossible. It was I who saw the potential possibilities within you. But, after all, why quibble and quarrel over such unimportant details? 
We are much too good a combination, aren't we? So we are. What's this? Oh, a bit chipped up. Must have happened in the rush. I'm so sorry. How often did I tell you not to grab things so roughly? I really shouldn't distress you so much, Andre. Hold that. You're so funny, Andre. You and your nails. Funny about it? It's just part of my intention. And you can't blame me for having at least applied for a patent to that invention of mine, can you? I would have been insulted if you hadn't. Consistently and regularly. And uh, you won't be angry if I keep on trying? Why should I? I might not change my mind, and then I might. Who knows? And now, Andre, I wish you'd leave me alone. I've had a very strenuous day. All right, Tanya. Good night, Andre. Sleep tight. Thanks, and pleasant dreams. I've heard some of the stories you've been spreading about me, Signor Rosselli. I warn you against repeating any more of this malicious gossip. But I am not Signor Rosselli. You're not Signor Rosselli? No, I don't even know him. Oh, I've made a terrible mistake. Oh, that's all right. I don't know what to say. Say nothing, Countess. Even being slapped by such a beautiful woman is an event. I only wish there was some way I could make amends. There is. You could dine with me. But we have met yet, Signor. Oh, uh, permit me to introduce myself. I am Herr Pratz. Herr Pratz. Tell me, Countess, is this your first visit to Venice? Oh, no. I've been here many times. You like it? <laughs> I love it. What a ravishing woman. Like a bouquet of spring flowers. Mesdames, Messieurs, nothing here, nothing there. And then one little bump as he gets out of the elevator and, uh, et voila. <laughs> Follow your marvelous. Really, Tanya? Mm -hmm. Before you forget. <laughs> and Andre, you should be congratulated too. You never picked a better subject. Thanks, Countess. You're welcome, Colonel. <laughs> and tomorrow, Herr Pratz will be showering me with gold. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see him. My dear Countess. Horrible tragedy has occurred. I have lost your priceless heirloom. But I insist that you must permit to pay for it in full. <laughs> oh, no, Polo. Herr Pratz is much too vain. Countess, you'll say? I walked into the jewelry store, threw the pendant down and said, Give me 200,000 lira. <laughs> <laughs> and when we have cashed in, we shall move along to other pastures, just as green or even greener. <laughs> Un truc grand pour monsieur. Merci. I'm Countess Vronsky. I've heard the malicious gossip you've been spreading about Monsieur Duval. I warned you. Just a minute. You've made a slight mistake. You say I'm not Monsieur Duval. You're not Monsieur Duval? No, I'm not. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I wish I were so I could slap you right back. I said I was sorry, Monsieur. I will do anything to make amends. Very well, then please stay out of my sight. You are being insufferably rude. It's a pleasure. Really, Tanya, you are taking this little incident much too seriously. Too seriously? Publicly beaten and insulted in the hotel lobby. That's not enough for you. <laughs> you know, Tanya, this is the first time I've ever seen that remarkable poise of yours desert you. 
It's rather gratifying to learn that under that frigid surface you do have emotions after all. I don't know why you're being so superior, Andre. If you remember, Monsieur Vernet was your selection. <laughs> a very logical selection. I have here a cutout from who's who in France. Vernet, Paul, Claude Henri. Born in Paris, 1914. September 22nd. That makes him sweet 25. Uh, astrologically speaking, he's a Virgo. They're very fine and clever people. I'm born under the same sign. <coughs> Only son of Claude Vernet, banker, member of the Paris, London, and New York Stock Exchange, is Grand Officier of the Légion d'Honneur, and Madame Vernet, née Marquise de Nuse de Lannay, graduate of Oxford, England, Lieutenant in Reserve, 3rd Regiment of Cuirassiers, member of the Racing Club of France, of Polo, Yachting, and Fencing Clubs. Bradstreet quotes him high up in the seven figures. Did you stick your finger in his eye, dear Tanya? Is that why he was immune to your charms? Come in. For you, Madame la Comtesse. Monsieur asked me to wait for an answer. The answer is yes. Merci, Madame. Well, what do you say to this, Colonel? Will you forgive the unforgivable and have... I can read and have dinner with me tonight. Paul, Paul Verny. So he was immune, was he? Madame la Comtesse. My most humble apologies. There exists no immunity to charms like yours. Your apologies are accepted, Colonel. <laughs> Ridiculous thing I've ever seen. I'm sitting here exactly five hours twiddling my thumbs. Maybe poor Tanya's having difficulties. I say she's having difficulties, difficulties remembering why she's here. More, more! Please, please, senor. I'm exhaust. My men, they are exhaust too. And I am exhaust. <laughs> Come on, let's sit down. Do you wish the bill, monsieur? When I wish the bill, I'll ask for it. This is a strange place. Everyone leaves so early. Uh, it, it is not early, madame. It is almost five o'clock. That'll be all. So? For a lady who doesn't want to go home, you look awfully depressed. The lady just remembered something. Is it as bad as all that? It's very, very bad. You're not going anywhere. Not until you tell me what's wrong. Do you see this? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow I won't have it anymore. I have to sell it. We've had it in our family for generations. Then why sell it? Because a little ball landed in red when it should have landed in black. The Vronskys never could resist the roulette wheel. Would you... Would you let me help you? Oh, no, 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 no. I wish you would. Well, you might do me a favor. Name it. Perhaps you could sell it for me. I'm no good at business. I'd be glad to try. How much is it worth? 200,000 francs. You're very kind. Right then, packet. Did you see it? <laughs> and what do you take me for, an amateur? <laughs> I might not be able to drink 23 whiskies, but in my own little line with my eyes and with my fingers, I too am an artist. <laughs> Good night. Paul. Paul.
Will you stop that? Stop what? I've watched you do that every day for years. Over 2,000 times. I've kept quiet. I can't do it any longer. It's too much. I want to know why five lumps of sugar, then why six, then why seven, then why seven and a half? I can't stand it any longer. Good morning. <laughs> Audrey is not his cheery self today. Funny. I never felt better in my life. But gentlemen, I do not work tonight. Oh, Madame la Comtesse doesn't work tonight. Now, isn't that just lovely? We did so well last night that tonight we shall celebrate. Caviar, champagne, seven and a half lumps of sugar in our coffee. Why not? Maybe we won't work tomorrow either. Perhaps not at all this week. <coughs> and then again, why work at all? Let's all retire. We're so rich we don't know what to do with our money. Listen, Tanya, isn't your heart any longer in your work? Or is it too much in your work, huh? You decide that, Andre. Goodbye. Goodbye? Sit down. I'm associated with clods and fools, loony maiden and papa idiotic louts. If I'm to do all the work myself, then I want all the pay myself. This imbecile, the man of the artistic eye and the artistic hands reached the pinnacle of his artistic career last night. Instead of lifting the pendant from Bernay's pocket, he picked his lighter. Anybody can make a mistake. I say you made a mistake. Instead of a jewel piece worth 250,000 francs, a lighter, a lighter that doesn't even light. But no lighter ever lights. Oh, well. Bernie will give it back to me, or the money. Kindly wait until I've given you the whole story. Unfortunately, Vernet will find out that the pendant is a fake. But it's genuine. Is it? It's as genuine as your title, Countess. Two days ago, I lost it through light, and I sold the real pendant. Audrey, no, you sold didn't. Sold it? But then Vernet will surely find out. Naturally, that's what I've been talking about. And the only way out for us is for you to call him up and tell them that you've changed your mind and that you don't want to sell the pendant. Now, do as I tell you. Operator, this is uh, Countess Vronsky. May I please speak to Monsieur Vernet? Oh, thank you. He's not in. He left early this morning. He's probably at the jewelers now. He'll be here shortly. It's all your fault. Andre. What's the matter with you? Can you keep your head? You talk about keeping my head. Don't you realize that running away is an admission of your guilt? What do you expect me to do? Stay here and face him? Exactly. Listen to me. You inherited that pendant from your mother, understand? It was considered a precious family heirloom. How were you supposed to have the slightest thought that such a jewel piece could possibly be for us, huh? You're not supposed to be a jewel expert. And by the way, you didn't ask him for any money. You don't owe him anything. All you asked was to sell the piece for you because you're not a businesswoman. When you'll find out that the pendant is a fake, well, that'll be too bad. But you're the only victim in the case. You're the only loser, no one else. What can you say except that he feels sorry for you? Nothing. Yes. Yes, you're right. I lost my head. Yes? Verne. Have him come up. Please have him come up. Take the table. Yes, Andre. Remember what I've told you. You act just as shocked as he is. Yeah. Come in. Good morning. Good morning. Am I too early? No, I was just telephoning you. You were? Yes, I... I wanted to tell you not to bother about selling the pendant. It's really an imposition. I'm afraid you're too late. Didn't you tell me it's worth 200,000 francs? Yes, but... I may have been wrong. You were. I got 300,000 for it. 
You sold it for 300,000 francs? You certainly did. It wasn't bad, was it? Well, you don't look very pleased. <laughs> oh, but I am pleased. If you could get 300,000 francs for my pendant, well, I'm sure it's so much better than I ever could do. Then you, uh, you probably wouldn't refuse to have dinner with me tonight. No, I probably wouldn't. And possibly cocktails earlier, say, 4 o'clock? Why, very well. <laughs> I'd ask you to lunch, only unfortunately I committed myself before I knew of your existence. Cruel, isn't it? Yes. You have had breakfast. <laughs> yes, I have. Very well, then I'll see you for cocktails. Au revoir. Au revoir. Tanya, you surpassed yourself. What an amazing performance. Why oh, isn't she marvelous? But I don't understand. He must have found out that the jewel was a fake. Naturally, but he also discovered how lovely Tanya's eyes are. And rather than sand them, he gladly sacrificed 300,000 francs. Oh, what a romanticist. Could I see the check, please? Do you suppose it's good? Maybe he'll stop payment. Idiot. The man's in love with Tanya. Love, love with a big capital L. 300,000 francs? That's 100,000 apiece. No, it's 150,000 for each of you. Well, what does she mean by that? I'll make you a present of it. Oh, no, Tanya. Polo? <laughs> Dear Andre, I knew you would see it my way. Consider it a farewell gift. Oh, but Tanya. But Tanya, you're not really going to leave us. Yes, I've made up my mind. It's partly your doing, Polo. You always told me I wasn't meant for this. Oh, don't blame me. Don't anybody blame me. Nobody's going to blame you. Do you expect to marry him? Of course not. How could I? <laughs> you couldn't. I was just wondering whether you were laboring under that delusion. And now, gentlemen, I'm sorry. I have a rendezvous and I must get ready. All right. So long, Tanya. I'll give you one month, at the most six weeks, for your little escapade. Go ahead, have your fling. You'll come back to us. And uh, when you need us, write, telephone, or wire. We'll be at the Hotel Hungaria in Budapest. Goodbye. is. But it's such a little boat. Will we be safe? Safe? Countess, I have the honor to inform you that you will be sailing with the winner of the Swedish Crown Cup. <laughs> then I'll be in good hands. <laughs> the best. <gasps> it's getting pretty rough. Shouldn't we turn back? Yes, but how? <laughs> what do you mean, how? Well, it's going to take a bit of maneuvering. Did he approach? It'll be a pleasure to watch the winner of the Swedish Crown Cup. What? Well, that was for tennis. You mean you never sailed before? This is my maiden boy. I hope it isn't your last. Why didn't you tell me you couldn't sail? How did I know I couldn't until I tried? Well, I hope you can swim. I'll let you know in a minute. go back to Nice tonight. It is rather late. Better plan on staying here. The rooms, we are ready for you, monsieur. Please, mademoiselle. Thank you. The second and third doors. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. 
Good night. Good night. Good night. Ten years old. Why the costume at this hour? Well, it's hard work, and I must practice. In a few short weeks, I have to try and make up all the time I didn't practice. But after all, this is only a charity affair. It's not as though you were doing it for pay. Nevertheless, charity affair or not, it's Thursday night. So little time left. So little time. Right. We mustn't waste time. Time and energy. Oh, energy, too. I must be good. There will be so many important people there. Hundreds. Like it? You're not eating your breakfast. I think I've changed my mind about breakfast. After I so kindly brought it to you. Oh, don't do that. You should eat your breakfast. Look at the toast and coffee. I and don't want any toast. And, and, and orange juice. Come no, here. no, I must Come practice. Here, please. I must. You can practice later. Another rehearsal gone. No luck, huh? You have tramped all over Paris, from the Quartier de la Villette to Mont Rouge, and found no trace of her. Yes, that's right. Oh, Audrey, I've covered all the ballet schools. But how did you know? Your feet, those ugly, tired, peasant feet, they tell the story. You see, I studied hands and feet. I can read them like you could read a book, if you could read. Oh, but I can read. Of course you can. You read words, but you can't read between them. Now, for instance, to you, those are just a woman's feet. But I tell you, she's a vendeuse in one of the department stores. Stood on her feet all day. But she isn't tired now. She's going to meet her sweetheart at some corner. Amazing. Woman with the bunions? Yes. She has given up hope of meeting anybody. Remarkable. Ten Brogans, American tourists. Big coin on the left little toe. See?
That was fine. Was that tempo right, Miss Vronsky? Yes, fine. Let's continue. I'd like to have a rest for a few minutes. Fine. Rest you. Hello, Polo. Hello, Andre. How are you? What's that? Out of my sight, out of nail polish. How are you? Oh, couldn't be better. Uh, no, no, not as good as when you were with us, Tanya. That's why we're looking for you all. How was I, Andre? Third rate? No, second. <laughs> then it is an improvement. Oh, if you take it like that. I'm happy for the first time in years, doing what I want to do, working hard, rehearsing, studying, more rehearsing. I will send you tickets for my performance. Oh, that's very kind of you, thanks. But you see, Tanya, now that we've found you, we're not going to neglect you like you neglected us. Uh, you need us for <laughs> moral support, and perhaps uh, we might need you. By the way, where are you living? Do you know Hotel Renault? 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 Hotel Rue Cambon, near the Ritz? That's it. Oh, yes. <laughs> this will perhaps amuse you. I'm living there under the assumed name of Lady Kennington. Why? Oh, just a whim. <laughs> My dear Lady Kennington, you're not married by any chance. Not I. I don't like married men that well. I was afraid you might have seriously taken up with that Vernet fellow. Vernet? Oh, surely you haven't forgotten. Oh, Ducky, what chance have men when women forget so quickly, huh? There was a man named Vernet. It was in Nice in the month of May. He was tall, dark, and handsome. Oh, yes, of <laughs> course. <laughs> he was handsome, wasn't, wasn't he? But now you have to run along. We shall call on you tonight, then, at the Renault. Yes, do that. Uh, around eight? With pleasure. We have so many things to talk about. I'll tell you about the white mouse that I trained when we were in prison. Prison? <laughs> yes, in Budapest. Uh, uh, pretty larceny, three months. <laughs> but uh, we shall tell you all about our experiences tonight uh, at the Renault. Lady Kennington? Au revoir. At eight. Au revoir. Come on, Ducky. Je m'en occuperai avec plaisir, monsieur. Parfaitement, monsieur. Well, really, Andre, I still can't see why you insist on seeing her now. Don't worry, Ducky, just one of my sudden impulses. But it's only 4.30, and we are supposed to see her at 8. I'm afraid she might forget that appointment. Monsieur? What is the number of Lady Kennington suite, please? Are you Colonel Demoreau? Yes. Uh, room 228, Lady Kennington is expecting you. Thank you. Bien, monsieur. But don't you trust her any longer? Tanya, I shall trust always. But I'm not so sure about Lady Kennington. Come in. I hope you don't mind our breaking in like this ahead of time. Knowing you, Andre, I expected it. Your faith in me is quite touching. Tanya, I hope you don't think that I... No, Polo, I don't. Here, Tanya. Thanks. Please make yourself comfortable. I even have some tea waiting for you. Isn't she sweet, Andre? And now, gentlemen, I hope you won't be offended if I get right to the point. You should know me by now, Tanya. I have just 60,000 francs left. And for all time's sake, I'll be glad to share equally. 20,000 for you, Andre. Oh, I hate to accept money from a woman. I mean, without having earned it. But I shall accept it as a loan. You may return to me at any time, if that might ease your conscience. And 20,000 for you, Polo. No, really, Tanya. But I want you to have it. You deserve it. You've been slighted so many times. Oh, well, if you insist, thank you very much. And now, what are your plans? Are you going to stay in Paris long? You know, Tanya, we wanted to go to South America. I've been checking with all the steamship co I didn't say anything. Do you like this hotel? Why, yes. Room clerk, please. Room clerk, this is Colonel Demereau speaking from Lady Kennington's suite. Have you by any chance another suite on the same floor? All right. Yes? Well, that's fine. 
Oh, indefinitely. From tonight on. Yeah, very good. Thanks. Very fortunate. Kathy and I are going to have the adjoining suite. I thought you were going to leave. Oh, I had to postpone that trip. You see, something very important came up since I saw you this afternoon. Sorry, Andre, but I'm afraid I've lost my taste for collaboration. But do you realize the value of this stone? I realize the value, and I'm still not interested. <laughs> not interested in a fortune that would make you independent forever? I'm quite independent now, and that's why I don't care to work with you anymore. You may be independent, but I'm not. Neither is Polo. This chance means a great deal to us. I'm sure you'll understand. And what if I don't? Then you must have some good reason for refusing. I'd be very curious to find out just what that reason is. There's nothing to find out, Andre. Then it is no. For a third part of the profit. But for a half, well, we might discuss it. I'm glad this evening's over. Oh, I rather enjoyed it. I thought it was stupid. Darling, you seemed upset all evening. Is something wrong? No, it's just that I had a horrible day. Everything went bad at the rehearsal. I'm sorry, darling. By the way, where were you this afternoon? Why? Well, you, you had an appointment for tea with Aunt Cecile, and apparently you didn't keep it. Oh, I'm terribly ashamed. I forgot all about it. Well, Aunt Cecile didn't. She was exploding when she called me at the office. Last time I saw a wife do that in a play, I nearly shot the author. Paul. Sleep well, darling. In the morning, you'll have forgotten all about your bed. Reservation for Herr Van Kangen. Van Kangen? I don't think so, Monsieur. But we can give you a nice room on the third floor. I should like to leave this portfolio in your safe. It's very valuable. Certainly, Monsieur. Will you come this way, please? Mettez ça dans le coffre for me. I say, Tanya. Oh, my darling. You look much too lovely. There isn't a man there who'll be able to keep his mind on the speeches. Paul, will you forgive me if I don't go with you tonight? What's the matter? Oh, I'm just not up to another diplomatic dinner. And besides, there's a concert I want to hear. Cotto playing Mozart. 
Well, of course, if you'd rather go to the concert. Oh, darling, you're not hurt, are you? Well, no, it's just that I always thought you rather enjoyed going with me. I do, but you understand, just this once, don't you? Well, I suppose so. <laughs> darling, I love you very much. And I don't want anything to spoil our happiness. I know you don't. Now, run along and have a good time. Thank you, darling. I'll be back before you. S'il vous plaît, monsieur. Merci, monsieur. just went into her room. I hope nothing goes wrong. If Tanya's heart is in the work, why should it? Do you know I have found, without exception, that beautiful women enjoy beautiful gems? Really? And the more beautiful the woman, the more beautiful the gem must be to thrill her. You shouldn't have said that. Sheer vanity will keep me from admiring any of them. I have discovered that few women can keep their heads in the face of temptation like this. You have seen the finest collection in all Europe, Lady Kennington. I can assure you of that. I must be a very beautiful woman, monsieur, because none of your gems thrill me. We shall see whether you can be thrilled. Here is one of the most beautiful diamonds in the world. The Imperata. 20 carats and absolutely flawless. Notice the color, the fire. Wait till I show you by comparison with ordinary stones. It's like a full moon among the stars, a gorgeous gem. It's exquisite. Marty, Marty, here comes the waiter. Did you ring, madame? Yes, take the tray, please. Just a minute. I swear, I, I had nothing to do with it. I did not was there. A clever trick, Lady Kennington. You are both under arrest. Polo, close the door quick. Tanya Scott. We'll have to help her. Don't be a fool. There's nothing we can do. Come in. I never visit strange clients without being well guarded. Arrest these two. Goodbye, Tanya. Don't stand there like a sentimental schoolboy. Go and start packing. Tanya will never involve us, André. I'm sure. Huh. Don't be too sure. Women are funny creatures. Yes, women are funny creatures. Gentlemen, a magnificent performance. I thank you. Thank you, madame. Did you take care of the waiter? Indeed I did. A good detective never forgets any. Thank you. Good night, madame. Good night. Call on us again if you ever need us. I hope I never shall. I think I'd better take a look in Tanya's room. Oh, 
Oh, Andre, Andre, come here, come here. Look, the Imperator. The Imperator. This is just as fakey as the diamond merchant Van Kongen and the whole scene Tanya put on for us tonight. What, then you mean that Tanya's arrest was only a fake? Yes. Tanya is not only a clever dancer, but a first-class actress. Why do you suppose she was so anxious to get rid of us? I don't know yet. But I have a queer feeling Cupid has something to do with it. Who is he? Never mind, Ducky. You'll find out. Enjoying yourself, Aunt Cecile? Not particularly. I detest the country. This is a bit rusty. Oh, dear. Double sixes at a time like this. Well, Tanya's having a grand time. Where? In the pool. Everywhere she swims, there's a school of young men following her. She shouldn't be in the water. Dancers shouldn't swim. It's too relaxing. Softens the legs. Maybe I'd better go and get her out. You stay right where you are, Emil. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Paul, who are those two strange people? I don't believe I know them. Pardon me, Aunt Cecile. How do you do? Monsieur Benny? Yes. I'm Count Nicolas Vronsky, your wife's cousin. Tanya's cousin? I'm happy to meet you. Delighted. And this is my very good friend, Commander Petrov. How do you do, Commander? We've just arrived in Paris, and when I learned that little Tanya was married, I simply had to see her. Of course, she'll be delighted. Strange that Tanya never mentioned you to me, Count. Perhaps she thought I was dead. You know, we Vronskys die young. There she is. Tanya! Surprise! Tanya! Tanya! My dear cousin! Oh, my dear cousin, it's so wonderful to see you again. Oh, Tanya, you are beautiful. This is my very good friend, Commander Petrov. Enchanté. How do you do? Aren't you happy to see me again, Tanya? Very. You know, we went to the address of your last letter, but you weren't there. So I worried, and the commander worried, too. Right. Oh, Tanya, darling, please, don't let's ever lose touch with each other again. You must stay over for the fete. Tanya's dancing tomorrow night. Dancing? She dances. Oh, Tanya, I'm so glad you kept up your dancing. You know, when she was a little child, she was already a first-rate dancer. Oh, we'll, of course, be only too happy to stay. Nothing in the world is so important as to take us away. Huh, Commander? Nothing in the world so important as to persuade us not to stay. Splendid. I'll show you to your rooms. This is your room. There's a bath adjoining. That's just lovely. And now, what are you doing here? Why, we came to see you, Tanya. What do you want? Why, we wanted to congratulate you on your marriage and scold you for not having asked us to act as best men at your wedding. Now, listen, Andre. Come in. Andre, here's our baggage. Good. That reminds me, I must have my dinner clothes pressed. Oh, but Tanya, this is really beautiful. You like it? This joke's gone far enough. Will you get out of here? Get out of here? We just came. I'll give you 20,000 francs if you leave at once. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. What do you mean? I mean that that isn't the tenth part of what I want. Don't you be ridiculous. 20,000 francs is all I have. Well, surely you're not pleading poverty, are you? Tanya, darling, I want you to know that I really don't like to do this. But you are doing it. Oh, but what can I do? Listen, Tanya, we're the ones who should be angry after that trick you played on us. In that case, I better speak to my husband. You'd better. Do you want me to? <laughs> Do you want to? But, Andre, why don't you take the 20,000? If that is all she has, and go. Please, let's go. I didn't come down here to collect pocket money. That may be your idea of profits, but it isn't mine. Oh, it just breaks my heart. But, Tanya, it doesn't have to be right now. You take your time about it. I'm sure you find some solution to your problem. Bonsoir, 
Oui, c'est vraiment merveilleux. Merci beaucoup. Oh, my darling. I've missed you. Where have you been? Madame Dubois had one of her dizzy spells. I gave her some ammonia. You seem nervous. No, just excitement and everything. You needn't be. The party's a great success. Everybody's thrilled. Are you a white Russian? No, no, no. I cannot say that I'm white. Oh, then you must be red. Uh, no, no, no. I cannot say that I'm red. Well, then what are you? Pink. I am pink, yes. A pale, pale pink. In other words, a conservative. <laughs> Colorful character, isn't he? Well, he's been wounded twice. In the head, I take it. I really don't know. Are there any more in the family like him? He is amusing, isn't he? <laughs> Say, unusual is more the word. <laughs> Little Tanya was only an infant, and I, of course, was only a small child, but very strong for my age. So I took her in my arms and fled with her into the dark, dark night. And then they fired at me. Boom, boom, boom. And you were wounded? Yes. Once here, and once here, and once exactly here. Please excuse me for it. Certainly. And you weren't killed? For a long time, no one was sure. Nicholas, Nicholas. Yes? Do you remember the trick we used to do? Trick? What trick? It's really a marvelous trick. Would you like to see it? Well, have yes, I mean, it is a trick. Oh, Aunt, do you like this one? It's wonderful. Will someone please get me two chairs? Yes. Come on. What please. trick? <laughs> but what trick? You please. know we have to watch tricks all oh, the yes. What trick? Don't you remember? Where would you like them? Right here, please. Right here, yes. Thank you so much. Nicholas, you sit here, and Emile, you sit here, please. That's right, sit down. Fine. Now, Nicholas and I learned this trick when we were children in St. Petersburg. I hope we still can do it. Watch me closely. Abracadabra, abracadabra. Abracadabra, abracadabra. Now look in your pockets. Did you lose anything? I've lost my wallet. Now look in your pockets. Did you find anything? I can't find a thing. Don't tell me you've forgotten where to look, Nicholas. Here it is. Madame, c'était de pato. Tonya, I am grieved. I'm such a pathological case. to bed. It's way past midnight. Come along, Emile. Yes, Mother. Oh, that's not a bad idea. So if you're really serious about going fishing at dawn, we'd better all turn in. Oh, I'm so tired. So am I. Darling, the party was a great success. I'm glad you think so. Oh, just a moment, everyone. I don't want to alarm any of you. But there have been some burglaries in the neighborhood recently. Burglars? I might have known it. Did you hear that, Amy? Yes, Mother, I did hear it. I dressed a great deal easier myself. If you let me put your jewelry in the safe. Oh, how exciting. It's a good idea, Tanya. Yes. Oh, I'm very happy that you warned us. <laughs> Tanya, shall we give you our things now? No, don't bother. I'll come up to your rooms in a few minutes and collect them. After this, I shall stay in town. Come in. in. I hope my ring is stolen. It's last year's. Bonsoir, Tanya. Bonsoir. Well, my darling, shall we turn in? Yes, let's. Good night. See you in the morning. Yes. Nicholas. Yes. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Monsieur Vanier, I wonder if I might talk to you and Madame for a moment. Certainly. Perhaps you'd better sit down. The subject is rather a delicate one. It's about Nicholas. I felt that as his best friend, I could speak to you. Frankly, I'm quite worried about him. You see, like so many of our exiled countrymen, he seems to be suffering from severe melancholia. I can't say I noticed it tonight. Oh, quite naturally, Nicholas tried to hide it. He wouldn't like to worry his cousin. But frankly, he's in a bad way. Oh, come. Oh, Auntie, uh, my cousin asked me to collect the jewelry for her. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Here are my bracelets, my necklace, and my ring. Oh, dear, I nearly forgot my brooch. Oh, I wouldn't bother about that if I were you, Auntie. You mean it's worthless? Oh, practically. 
Oh, well, so was the man who gave it to me. <laughs> oh, Nicholas, I feel so safe with you in the house. Good night. Good night. Perhaps a long rest in some institution might help. Oh, I don't think that will be necessary. Let's hope not. A travel is the only thing that seems to help Nicholas. Seeing strange places and meeting new people cheers him up. I suppose you too, madame, have traveled a great deal? Oh, extensively. Funny, of all the places in the world, I prefer the French Riviera, particularly Nice. Do you know Nice? Quite well. Do you know Budapest? I lived there th over three months. Most hospitable place. I'm sure you would like it. It was a very charming evening. I enjoyed myself. I wish you a good night. Good night. Good night. Who is that man? Why, Commander Petrov? My cousin told you. He's not your cousin. Who are those men? Darling, I'll tell you everything. But first, I must take care of my guest's jewelry. It's probably a very good idea. Auntie. Yes? Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I forgot to give my earrings to your cousin. My cousin? Yes, Nicholas. He's collected my other things. Collected other things? Yes. Good night. Oh, Paul! What's the matter? We must stop them. They've stolen everything. What do you mean? Those men, they're leaving. I can't explain now, but we've got to catch them. We've got to. Followed. The next turn, I'll stop. You get out with the bag and hide in the woods. I? Yes, you. By the time they catch up with me, they'll find nothing. You'll be safe. Safe? Naturally, you and the jewels. Can you hurry to the harbor? Meet me tomorrow night at the boat. I'll have the tickets. <laughs> still the matter of paying our guests for their jewelry and explaining. You asked me who those men were. I couldn't tell you then. I can now. They're thieves, jewel thieves, and I was one of them when I first met you. I've tried my best to keep it from you, but I've been weak and I've been cowardly. I should have told you all along. But I was afraid I'd lose you. And now it doesn't make any difference. Because I've lost you anyway. 
You haven't lost me, Tanya. You've given me a number of very bad moments during the last few hours, but you haven't lost me. I love you. I can't give you up. I can't ever give you up, no matter what you are or what you've done. If only you'd told me at the start, I'd have been on your side all along. And all this would never have happened. But it doesn't matter. I'm on your side now. And somehow, we'll get out of it. I think there's a garage down the road a little way. You won't be afraid here, will you? I'll never be afraid again, Paul. Everybody will be having breakfast. We can tell them all at once. Tell them what? Tell them, dear people, the friends of my wife has stolen your jewelry. Eat a good breakfast. Now it's better that I go to the police. Look! There they are, all of them. Someone must be telling them now. And to whom do these beautiful pearls belong? Oh, I they belong to me. Uh, Madame. <laughs> Thank you. And that's everything. Yes, but Nicholas, what about my earring? Oh, but Auntie, you didn't give them to me. I know it. That's why I'm worried. <laughs> Hmm? I imagine that, going out alone after we went to bed. Good morning, Tanya. Good morning. Good morning. You know, I can't say I approve of this sort of thing. Where have you been? Out for a drive. <laughs> a drive? <laughs> oh, by the way, Tanya, uh, where are my earrings? Upstairs in my room. Oh, well, I must say that's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see why you didn't leave them with Nicholas here, where they'd be safe. And here, my dear cousin, is your cigarette case. But I didn't expect me to return it so soon. Oh, I was only keeping it overnight with the other thing. I'm, I'm so sorry the commander had to leave, but I, of course, simply had to stay to see my little Tanya dance tonight. Yes, he must stay, mustn't he, darling? Oh, oh by all means, by all means. Mm -hmm. Somehow we all feel much safer with you in our midst. Andre. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. Here are your tickets and your change. Will you take the early boat train or the late one? The early one. And uh, keep the change. Oh, merci, monsieur. Merci. Bon voyage. Bon voyage, monsieur. Backstage.
She's wonderful. There's never been anyone like her. Hey, Paulo? A wonderful performance, Oh, Tanya. magnificent, Tanya. Simply <laughs> marvelous. <laughs> You're not disappointed in me? Disappointed? No, my darling. I could never be disappointed in you. <laughs> what happened to Polo? I don't know. He was, he was here right up to the finish of the number, and then he suddenly seemed to vanish. <laughs> darling, I'll only be a few moments, and then you and I have a very important engagement. Have we? Mm-hmm. You're going to take me to the nearest bench in the nearest park, and we're going to sit there and watch the sun come up, just like we did the first night we met. I'm afraid you might have changed your mind. Oh, but, Audrey, must you always hurt me? Don't you know me better after our long years of yes. association in sickness and in health for rich and for poorer? Yes, I should. Audrey, but we did have good times together, didn't we? Yes. Especially in my beloved France. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Oh, my France. Au revoir. Ah! Oh. I'm sorry, Andre. That's a great help to me. Now what am I going to live on? Everything I owned was in that bag. Now I have nothing, absolutely nothing. That's true, almost nothing. What do you mean, almost nothing? Absolutely nothing. Oh, uh, only this. And, and, and this. And, and this. I'll take care of this, Ducky. You see, without me, you would be lost in this sophisticated world full of shrewd men and clever women. Yes, I'm just a baby in the wood. Yes, I know. Nice little baby. See you later. 